the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, three international banking corporations are in discussion to set up offshore operations in Sri Lanka's Colombo port city. Multiple organizations working on establishing a blended financing facility for smallholder farmers. After four days of losses, Colombo Stock Exchange rebounds today with both all share price index and S&P SL20 indexes showing gains. Turnover significantly increases. And Huawei looks to upstage Apple, unveiling a trifoldable phone just hours after its US rival debuted its new iPhone. From Studio 24, here's Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Three international banking corporations are in discussion to set up offshore operations in Sri Lanka's Colombo port city. CHEC Port City Colombo Private Limited stated that Sri Lanka's parliament on the 4th of September approved offshore banking rules gazette in July. The presence of offshore branches of international banks would promote greater financial stability and provide the dexterity to invest in large-scale projects for prospective global investors. Commercial Bank of Sri Lanka, Sampath, HNB, DFCC, NDB and NTB have been approved as authorized persons by the Colombo Port City Economic Commission to operate in the Special Economic Zone. Seven local banks are in discussion to set up offshore banking units in the Port City area. Those branches will also operate under the direct supervision and oversight of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka and the Financial Intelligence Unit, which further reinforces the growing investor confidence in Port City Colombo as a regional investment hotspot. The Port City area is a multi-currency special economic zone which is free from the open market operations of the central bank and its banks therefore cannot create forex shortages. Enabling higher transactional efficiencies and more fortified exchange of securities, these regulations will allow businesses to draw on their capital strength. Sri Lanka has officially called for expressions of interest from private investors to develop six key railway stations located in and around Colombo. These stations include Kolpiti, Bambalapitiya, Vallavatta, Kompanivedia, Dehivala and Mount Lavinia, which serve as major transit hubs within the capital and its suburbs. According to the Minister of Transport and Highways, Minister Bandula Gunavardhana, the development will be carried out through a public-private partnership with the aim of transforming these railway stations into station plazas. The property belonging to the railway's department will be leased on a long-term basis to private investors who will be responsible for the modernization and commercial development of these locations. This initiative is a part of the government's broader plan to revamp the country's infrastructure and boost economic growth through private sector participation. The minister further mentioned that expressions of interest have already been submitted for the development of the other railway stations across the island, emphasizing this initiative extends beyond the Colombo region. Notably, the Alla railway station, which is situated in a prominent tourist hotspot in the hill country, is set to be developed by Lux Seller, a private entity. The redevelopment of these stations is expected to not only improve the transport network but also stimulate the local economy by turning these stations into commercial hubs, attracting businesses, tourists and enhancing the overall passenger experience. The Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, the Sustainable Development Council of Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka Banks Associations are working on establishing a blended financing facility for smallholder farmers. It will offer financial support and tech access to 1.65 million farmers. The trade body said that the given current economic challenges, a blended finance facility is required to increase the effectiveness of development finance by creating an environment that attracts private investment as a multiplier effect. The Chamber said that a Special Purpose Vehicle or SPV that pools resources commitments from different partner organizations such as financial support and technical assistance would be the initial development. It further added that this will mobilize capital for business development investments in Sri Lanka's agriculture sector and over time as the markets mature, the facility could evolve into a decentralized financial platform. The blended finance facility will focus on building resilience and inclusivity in the agri-food sector initially. The Chamber noted that a successful model could then be extended to other higher impact sectors such as the energy sector in the long run. Let's take a short break now. Equity market updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report.
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. After four consecutive days of losses at the Colombo Stock Exchange, the market has shown a positive turn today. Following a previous positive day after a long hiatus of over 10 days, both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index have recorded gains. Additionally, turnover has seen a significant increase. For today's market summary, let's now join Vinodhani Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. After four straight sessions of losses, the Colombo Stock Exchange saw a turnaround today driven by strong participation from high net worth investors. The ASPI closed the day in green at 10,575, marking a gain of four points from the previous day, whilst the S&P SL20 index also rose by five points to close at 2,928 for the day. Meanwhile, the market turnover reached 1 billion rupees, reflecting a 24% increase over the monthly average. This surge was primarily driven by Commercial Bank, Nations Trust Bank and John Keels Holdings, with off-board transactions in Commercial Bank accounting for 13% of the total market turnover. The banking sector dominated the turnover, contributing 54%, while the capital goods sector contributed 27% to the total turnover. The top gainers for the day were Industrial Asphalt, Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance, SMB Finance Voting and Muller and & Phipps. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were Blue Diamonds Voting, Mercantile Shipping Company, Singh Hospitals, Malvatta Valley Plantations and Luminex. The Central Bank's weekly Treasury Bill auction took place today and to get its insights and the impacts towards the secondary market, we have Tarusha Shogar standing from Purse Capital Holdings. Thank you. In today's Treasury Bill auction, weighted average yields continue their upward trend across all maturities. Both the three-month and six-month Treasury Bills saw significant increases while the one-year bill rose more modestly. So the Central Bank of Sri Lanka offered LCAT 180 billion in total but accepted only LCAT 164.8 billion representing 92% of the total offer. Notably, 64% of the accepted bids were for the three-month treasury bill. The three-month bill posted a notable rise of 38 basis points reaching 9.99% while the six-month bill increased by 30 basis points to close above the 10% threshold at 10.24%. In contrast, the one-year bill saw only a marginal increase of four basis points, closing at 10.07%. Despite the strong demand for the three-month bill, which was oversubscribed, both the six-month and one-year bills were undersubscribed. Particularly, the one-year bill saw minimal interest with only LCAD 1 billion being accepted. So for this week ending 13th September 2024, CBSL has LCAD 171 billion worth maturities to settle bills, while LCAD 165 billion has been raised from primary auction during the week. Gold prices rose in Asian trade today and were close to record highs as the fiery debate between presidential candidates Kamala Harris and Donald Trump raised uncertainty over the 2024 elections. Spot gold rose 0.1% to $2,519.73 an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December rose 0.2% to $2,548.45 an ounce. Anticipation of a key U.S. inflation reading also kept investors biased towards safe havens, such as bullion and the Japanese yen, while the dollar fell in the wake of the debate. Gains in gold came tracking a decline in the dollar after the presidential debate yesterday. Gold benefited from some safe haven demand following the debate, with spot prices trading just below a record high of $2,532.05 an ounce. Oil climbed more than 1% today, powering some of the previous day's losses as a drop in U.S. crude inventories and concern about Hurricane Francine disrupting U.S. output countered concerns about weak global demand. 
Brent crude futures were up 1.6% to $70.29 a barrel, while U.S. crude futures gained 1.7% to $66.86. U.S. crude stocks fell by 2.793 million barrels, gasoline declined by 513,000 barrels, and distillates inventories rose by 191,000 barrels, according to the market sources citing the latest week's American Petroleum Institute figures yesterday. Both oil benchmarks tanked yesterday with Brent falling below $70 to its lowest since December 2021 and U.S. crude droppings to its lowest since May 2023 after OPEC revised down its 2024 oil demand growth forecast for a second time. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the U.S. dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar is 296 rupees and 08 cents, while the selling rate is 305 rupees and 36 cents. The rupee has also appreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, including Gulf currencies. A short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Western Automobile Assembly Private Limited yesterday announced the opening of its state-of-the-art SKD assembly plant in Kulia Pitya. The company is investing around $27 million for this project and the first assembled vehicle made from this facility, a 15-seater passenger van, will roll out at the end of the month. This state-of-the-art facility marks a significant advancement in the local vehicle assembling, driving economic development in Sri Lanka while equipping the nation's youth with the skills and knowledge which are essential for sustainable growth and long-term prosperity. The Western Automobile Assembly SKD assembly plant is a company operating under the Board of Investment. The plant has been designed by global automotive experts and outfitted with the premium international machinery. Its efficient assembly process is based on lean manufacturing principles and a flexible and transparent setup capable of handling the requirements of multiple brands. Adhering to international safety and quality standards, the facility is poised to become a leading automotive hub in the region. The company has established partnerships with several local services business providers in the area which are oriented businesses such as security, logistics and transport, catering and laundering, creating a broader positive impact on the local area economy. In addition, they are deeply committed to training and development. They have set up an on-site training institute of international standards to provide vocational training aligned with the global industry requirements. The Grand Skills Expo 2024, a prominent job and educational exhibition, is currently on its second day at the Nelum Pokona premises. This significant event, which started yesterday, will continue through tomorrow, providing ample opportunities for attendees to explore a wide range of career and education options. Organized by the Minister of Education in collaboration with the Industrial Council, the exhibition brings together numerous local and international education institutions alongside career consultants offering valuable guidance to visitors. Whether you are aiming for a career abroad or seeking job opportunities within Sri Lanka, Skills Expo 2024 is a prime event not to be missed. With the participation from many state and private universities, the exhibition provides a platform for exploring diverse education and career paths. A standoff feature is that the entry is completely free, making it accessible to everyone. For those currently employed or actively searching for work, this exhibition is an ideal opportunity to stay informed about the latest educational advancements and opportunities available in various fields. Additionally, the exhibition includes live demonstrations, interactive workshops and presentations from industry experts while helping attendees gain practical insights into various sectors. 
whether you are a student a professional or someone considering a career change skills expo 2024 offers a comprehensive platform to enhance your knowledge and expand your network This is Mogul Murali Prakash was appointed as a chairperson of the Federation of Asia Pacific Retailers Association at a ceremony held on the 6th of September in Colombo. Prakash, a respected figure in the retail industry, will lead the association's initiatives for the next 2 years. The formal handover of the chairmanship was conducted by the outgoing chairperson Roy Nicholas Mande. Chairperson of the Indonesian Retail Merchants Association to Murali Prakash, who previously served as the Deputy Chairperson of FAPAA, an immediate past president of the Sri Lanka Associations Association. FAPRA empowers a member country every two years to host the Asia Pacific Retailers Convention and Exhibition, a premier knowledge sharing event and exhibition for the retail industry. The APRCE 2023 Knowledge Concave was held at the BMICH Hall and attendees included delegates from speakers from 15 countries, mostly representing FAPRA member nations, as well as prominent Sri Lankan retailers. Hemas Holdings PLC was partnered with the Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology to enhance healthcare education in the country. Together, they have established the SLIIT Hemas Allied Health Sciences Institute to offer innovative nursing and allied healthcare programs. The institute with over 300 students will welcome a new intake in October. By combining Hemas Hospital's extensive experience in private healthcare delivery with SLIIT's renowned reputation for quality education, the partnership will offer a comprehensive range of programs designed to meet the growing demand for globally employable allied healthcare professionals. The current programs are affiliated with the Deakin University Australia and Liverpool John Moores University UK. Additionally, the nursing program is accredited by the Territorial and Vocational Education Commission at the NVQ Level 6. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is a nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. More station stocks fell today amid uncertainty over what is shaping up to be a hotly contested US presidential race, while concerns over trade saw Chinese markets hit a seven-month low. Regional markets tracked losses in US stock index futures, which fell as Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump faced off in a fiery debate. The debate casts more doubts over the 2024 presidential race with less than 2 months left to the ballot. China Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indexes fell 0.2% and 0.8% respectively, extending losses from the prior sessions and trading at lows last seen in early February. Wall Street's benchmark S&P 500 index closed up 0.5%, but concerns about slowing economic growth, stunted gains, and the Dow dipped as bank stocks sank after warnings of current quarter weakness, while energy shares tumbled. Wall Street's main indexes closed with mixed results on Tuesday as bank and energy stocks weighed, while Oracle helped boost the AI trade. The Dow dipped about two tenths of a percent. The S&P 500 gained almost half a percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq added more than eight tenths of a percent. Energy was the biggest percentage decliner among the S&P's 11 sectors, losing about two percent as crude oil futures fell after OPEC Plus cut its 2024 and 2025 demand forecast. Bank stocks fell broadly after Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon said late Monday that trading revenue could fall 10 percent this quarter. That was followed Tuesday by J.P. Morgan Chase's tempered expectations about income from interest payments. Uncertainty about the Federal Reserve's decision on interest rates next week also fueled investor anxiety. In other stock moves, shares of Oracle rallied about 11.5 percent, making it the S&P 500's biggest gainer after the software company beat estimates for quarterly results. 
On the flip side, Hewlett Packard Enterprise was the S&P 500's biggest decliner on Tuesday, falling 8.5% after the server maker announced a $1.35 billion mandatory convertible preferred stock offering to fund its acquisition of Juniper Networks. Finally, economic policy from the two presidential candidates was in focus, ahead of the first debate between Vice President Kamala Harris and her Republican rival, former President Donald Trump. Huawei looked to upstage Apple as a Chinese tech giant unveiled a $2,800 tri-foldable phone just hours after its U.S. rival deputed its new iPhone. Huawei looked to upstage Apple on Tuesday. The Chinese tech giant unveiled a $2,800 trifoldable phone just hours after its US rival debuted its new iPhone. Huawei showed off its new Mate XT, which users can fold three ways like an accordion screen door. The company said they've already received more than 4 million pre-orders for the device. Huawei Executive Director Richard Yu. Today we bring you a product that everyone can think of, but could not make. Our team has been working hard for five years and has never given up. You said the new phone has an AI assistant with text summary, translation and editing functions. The phone's launch drew crowds to this Huawei store in Beijing. The new smartphone highlights Huawei's ability to navigate US sanctions and solidifies its position against Apple in China. The Mate XT was unveiled hours after Apple released its latest model, the iPhone 16. The handset will use AI features called Apple Intelligence to improve the company's voice assistant Siri as well as enhance the camera. Though Apple has yet to announce an AI partner in China to power the 16s and Apple Intelligence will only be available in Chinese languages next year. Both smartphones are due to go on sale on September 20th, with the Mate XT more than double the price of the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Some analysts argue the trifold phone is likely to become more of a symbol of Huawei's tech prowess than a major sales driver due to the high price tag. Boeing is struggling to boost production of its best-selling 737 MAX jet amid scrutiny by watchdogs and uncertainty over whether a big pay deal would be accepted by union members, added to the company's troubled outlook. Boeing faces fresh turbulence over production and pay. Sources say it's struggling to ramp up output of its best-selling 737 MAX jets. The model has been under fierce scrutiny ever since a mid-air blowout on one of the type earlier this year. It faces additional safety and regulatory checks as a result. Now the sources say Boeing has pushed back a key production milestone by six months. Output of the planes may not hit a 42 per month target until March next year, instead of September this year. When asked about the report, a Boeing spokesman referred back to comments in July, when the firm said it would make adjustments to production as needed. But two of the sources said the changes to its internal target were making it hard for suppliers to make plans. Meanwhile, a pay deal for some 32,000 Boeing workers hangs in the balance. Union members are due to vote Thursday on the package, which includes 25% wage increases. However, one union official told many workers were angry the deal didn't include bigger pay hikes and better pensions. He said many wanted to hold out for a 40% wage jump. If union members now vote down the deal, Boeing could see a crippling strike added to its list of challenges. Well, that is it from us at the Nightly Business Report for the day. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest business and economic updates. Until then, I am Sonia Mudan Nayaka. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.